All right, we're live on YouTube. So today we're going to do functions and applications and some other stuff as well. Let's see. Let me put this uh, right here straight. YouTube, I'm still trying to figure out how the best way to make these videos for you guys. All right, I think this should do it. Uh, but eventually, I'll, I will find a better way to, to get these lives to you in a way that you can understand. The computer still is like it's a little cricket. I think this should be a little bit better. All right, cool. Let me go live on the other apps. I should have went live first on TikTok. I'm right, about to go live on TikTok. All right, we're going to go live on Instagram as well. Not Instagram. Yeah, Instagram. And then Facebook. Let's see. Share. Uh, you guys bear with me on, on, uh, on flip with the camera. All right, cool. All right, so I think this is good on TikTok. Let's try to see if we can find the live on Instagram as well. Uh, if you're on TikTok, you just comment in, say what's up. Instagram. Uh, let's go live on IG. How do you do this again? I think it's this way. This way. I think you have to swipe it or something. Uh, swipe. Somebody showed me how to how to get live on Instagram. So I'm still trying to get live on Instagram. What's going on, you guys on YouTube? So what we're doing today is. We'll talk about these, and then probably if you have any questions, we'll answer them. Uh, every time I'm trying to go live on Instagram, somebody told me last time, I think you swipe left or right, but you got to go to a specific page. Or oh, is it home page? There you go. There you go. Now. All right. So I think I got it now. Mm-hmm. Somebody go live on IG. Let's see. Let's flip the camera. We are live on Instagram. Ooh. This is hopefully this is a little bit better. What's going on, Tiki? Y'all, Dren. So we, we what we're doing, guys, here is helping you guys with math questions, and and yeah, that's what we're doing today. Let me see if I put the Facebook live um, now. Right, I'm trying to go live on Facebook, guys. Give me one second if you're already here. So this is what we're doing today. Let me try to go live on Facebook. Um, let's see. One second. I think this is connected to the internet. It is. But now, all right. This is loading. There you go. <clears throat> All right, we're about to go live on Facebook. Uh, publish live video. Free man. Children. I probably wonder what's going on. All right, I'm trying to go live on, 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 on Facebook. Uh, that com. All right, 
I think you should do it. We might help the parents and children. I uh, start live video. Now I gotta flip this camera. I think you should do it. Bro, take your phone. Oh, wait a minute, I gotta rotate it? Okay. <laughs> All right, I gotta move this. One second, guys. I'm trying to make this as slick as possible. Oh, snap. <laughs> I think I need to rotate this this way. Yeah. Yeah, turn your phone while recording. Nice. I think it should do it. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Okay. Hey, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, I'm making the connections live right now. Probably ter terrible way to do this. <laughs> let me try to connect this. Uh, I also need to charge this too. If you got any question, please start asking them. Cause we gotta go fast. And all right, let me fix this for Facebook. TikTok, what's up? You guys are quiet. All right, I think they should do it for Facebook Live. Yeah, I should do it. I I just gotta move this a little bit back this way. I think they should do it, guys. All right, cool. Let's see. Let's see if you guys are good. Facebook. Uh, one person is in there. Let's see. Imaginary numbers aren't real. That's good. <laughs> That's a good start. So please save my math grade. All right. Let's see who's on. Hey, Timothy. L-I-N-Z-I-Q-I. -I. What's up? I say I'm the best tutor ever. Thank you. Appreciate your help. Appreciate your uh, compliment. All right. Cool. So let's start this, this show. I don't know why my hands is in the way. Cool, let's start this. All right. All right, so, so today what we're gonna do is a, a few things. So we're gonna do, probably this is more related to Algebra 2, Honors Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus to Calculus, what we're gonna do here. And then the second thing we're gonna do is uh, a little bit of geometry. And this could be Algebra 2. This could be Algebra, Algebra 1. And then we're going to get into imaginary numbers. I think you see this in uh, made for calculus and sometimes algebra 2, too. So, yeah. So the first thing we have is a function. And uh, what they ask us for is the domain, the range, the, the intercepts, and, and then uh, a few other things. So let me write this here. One, two, three, negative one. Negative two, negative three, one, two, three. So, what they give us is this graph, and this is this is pretending this only. So, what they give us is this graph, and they say, hey, uh, using this graph, what's the domain of this function? What's the range? And and then they also ask us another question about it too. Uh, I'll look at the questions as we go along. So, the first thing that they tell us to assume is, you know. Um, this should look like this. These both of these sides kind of look like look alike. A drawing skill is not the best. I think this should do it. Maybe yes, no. Between two points. Two points. Uh we won't need these for now. Let me erase these actually. And then we're gonna go, we can look at them in a little bit. So we're looking at this function. So the first thing you ask us is, what's the domain of the function? What's the domain of this function? 
Now, the main, what it's basically saying is, okay, what are all the possible x values that I can put in the function? Now, when they give us this problem, they say, we're assuming that this continues um, forever to, from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, we're going to find the domain. And let me see who can tell me how we would find the domain. What's the domain of this function? Let me see. I'm going to go around and see what the answers are. And if I don't see an answer, I'm going to explain it to you guys and, and uh, give you the answer. Uh, so, and show you how to find the answer. All right, let's see what's, who got the domain. Facebook. What's up, James? What's up, Wilbert? <laughs> Alvin likes what? Uh, Cartic equations. Did you mean quadratic? Oh. Can you do some of uh, two variable equations? Two variable equations. Do you mean system of equations? What are you focusing on function? Yes, I am. Last time I had a bunch of questions about functions. Hey, uh, McKenna, what's up? Mathematically, furthest left to furthest right. What you say is correct. Which, uh, who said that? Swish 21B, furthest left to furthest right. That's correct. That's a good way to think about it. So mathematically, what does that mean? So swish 21B say furthest to the left and to furthest to the right. And then you know what on the left, all the way out here on the left is negative infinity. And all the way out on the right is, I shouldn't be this sloppy. Let me just do this in black. And all the way out on the right is infinity. So what she's saying is, uh, he or she is saying is switch 21. I'm not sure if it's a man or a woman. So what she's saying, it goes all the way out to the left and all the way out to the right. Who can tell me mathematically what does that mean? What does that mean that the function goes all the way out to the left? It can take all the values to the left and all the values to the right. So what does that mean mathematically? How do we represent that? What do, what do we say the domain is when it's when it can take everything to the left, you know, left, and then everything to the right? So what we say, let me see who had the answer. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you shoot it, Alvin. <laughs> Because all these kids are probably going to, uh, it's probably, you're probably going to mess them up. <laughs> They're like uh, middle school and high school kids. You're going to mess them up. Hey, t uh I'm going to hit you up. Probably, Wilbur, I'm going to hit you up. Probably um, on, uh, either on WhatsApp or, I, I'm going to hit you up on WhatsApp or, or Facebook. School starts tomorrow. I'm going to need some help. No problem. User 24245350. Negative infinity to infinity. That's right. From negative infinity to infinity. That's right. And uh, what the heck? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I thought this was saying that this was going. From negative infinity to infinity. So Lindsay 2113. That's right. Uh, who else is here? All right, cool. Hey, what's up, Timothy? All right, cool. So, yeah, so that's what she's saying from negative infinity to plot to infinity. So that's what the domain is. So she's saying that the domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. Now, what is that? What's another way to represent this? What's another way to, to, to say that the domain is going from negative infinity to infinity? That means it's all real numbers all real numbers. Now, who can tell me how to represent, what's the notation that we use to represent all real numbers? So what's, what's, what's another notation that you can use to represent all real numbers? What's, uh, how do you, instead of saying, you know, from the infinity to pop to infinity, all real numbers, how do we represent that? What's the notation that we can use for that? Let's see. Uh, YouTube, nope. Let's see. Um, no, who else is in? All real numbers. R. Yeah, that's why right. McKenna. That's what's up. R. These are all real numbers. Let's see. Anybody on? Hey, what's up, Timothy? Oh, uh, Jessica Richards. What's going on? Natalie. Oh, uh, Jahay, Jahat, Box. 
I'm probably messing up your username. Ah, right, yeah, so that means R. So, yeah, that's R with double line. So that means all real numbers. So that, that's what the domain of the function is. Now, the, the next question that they ask, who has questions? Who, who, who doesn't understand this? Like, if you have questions. Now, don't say you don't understand this if you like in, you know, fifth grade, probably, you probably will not see this for, for another few years. So like, who has seen this and don't, and still doesn't understand it? Who have seen something like this before and doesn't understand what we just did? Um, I'll go around and see. If I don't see any anyone who say they don't understand it, I will, I will move on to something else. Let's see. I don't know why. Why does it move it so much? I shouldn't. Let's see. Is this Charlie? Hold up. What's that? There you go. All right, cool. So, anybody else has questions? Let's see, I'm a, I'm a senior. Me, I never understand this. Okay, easy beard. I'm, a, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over it again. All right, so I understand when it curved just one not, once, not twice. Uh, what do you mean, McKenna? What What do you mean that you understand when it curves just once, not twice? So what we're talking about here, easy is. Uh, I don't know why this is going this way. There you go. All right, so what we're talking about here, easy series, he doesn't understand it. You've seen it before. So what we're talking about is when you have a function. So a function is a set of input, a set of output. But there's there's also a rule, you know, um, one input cannot go to do two different outputs. So that's, that, that's what makes it a function. But other than that, it's a set of input and a set of output. There's a way that you can finally graph a function. You can have a function f of x is equal to 2x squared. You can find a graph for this function. There's a way that you graph a function. This is a function. They just graph it. So now what they ask us is, what are the possible inputs that you can put in the function? So that's what we call the domain. So the possible inputs. So what are all the values that you can put in the, in the function? Now, let me explain this another way. Let's say that you that you have, you know, you have an oven at your house. And there are things that you can put in there. You can put, you know, chicken, turkey, you can put vegetables in there in the oven. But you cannot, you know, you can, you're just probably going to cause, you know, mess up your house. But you cannot just put aluminum foil or paper under the oven and then expect something to happen. So those all, like, if you think about paper and aluminum foil are not possible input inside of this oven. And the same way in the function, there are things that you cannot put in it, in, in the sets of real numbers. So there are things that you cannot put in it. But, but you, don't, you don't really have to, to say that because every time they say domain, usually they assume that it's in the set of all real numbers. Now, just like I said, in the oven, you cannot put aluminum for you. You cannot put paper. You cannot put, you know, just a, one of your shirt in there. And you can put it in there. It'll, it'll just mess it up. But if you put like turkey or vegetables in there inside of the uh, under, you know, in the oven, it will make something will make. So function is the same way. You put something inside and then something else come out. So you put raw chicken, cooked chicken come out. You put raw turkey, cooked turkey come out. You put raw vegetable, cooked vegetable come out. That's the same thing for the function. So the set of values that we can put inside of this function, that's what we call the domain. That's what we call a part of those. Those are the, 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 the values. The, the set of values that are part of the domain and the things that we can that are coming out of the function the possible output are what we call range now what we're talking about now is the possible input the possible things that you can put inside the function so you have the function right here everything that you can put in it are like input you can put like i said chicken vegetables turkey fish you can put inside the oven and then something else come out raw chicken come in cooked chicken comes out. Raw turkey, cooked turkey. Raw vegetable, cooked vegetable. So this is the function. Now, all the set of everything that we can put inside of this is called the domain. Everything that can come out are called the range. So raw chicken, raw vegetables, 
uh, raw turkey, all part of the main, and everything that comes out, which is cooked chicken, cooked vegetables, and everything, are part of the range. I can give you other examples to explain that to you. Does that make sense? Now, here is how this relates to what we have here. So what we have here is a function, the same thing that I, I was explaining before. So it has, there is a bunch of input that are possible for it. So what they say is based on this graph, how do we find the possible input for this function? So how do we find the possible values that we can put inside of here that has an output? And there are certain things that you can put in here that, that, that there could be, I mean, what I'm saying, there's certain function when you put stuff in it, you don't have any output for it. That value is undefined. So now in this case, what, what happened in this case, everything, every volume possible, you can put inside of this. So I can put zero inside of it. So zero has an output, one has an output, three has an output, four has an output, seven has an output, a million has an output, negative 100 has an output. Now, if I had this function, f of x is equal to one over x, there are certain things that I cannot put in here. So if I put zero here for x, one over zero is undefined. So that means the value, the, in, the input of zero does not have an output. And that is not part of the domain. That is not part of the set of the numbers that we can put inside this function. So this, this zero would be considered the 12, you know, the, the paper towel that you would put inside of the oven. So it doesn't have an output. Um, hope that explains it to you. So let me know if you have any questions, and then we're going to move to the range. Let me see if, if there's any other questions. Yes, no, maybe. Yes, that's what they use, the vertical line test, usually, uh, to see if it's a function. Uh, yes, Alvin. Let's see. No problem, Ryan. Thank you. I'm in geometry. <laughs> yeah, this may not be for you. Maybe the, the distance between two points are probably for you. So in, today we're going to cover probably a topic in each class, kind of. Geometry. I understand when it curved, just not one. So, McCullough, please tell me what, you, what you're trying to say. Could you solve a question? Uh, Miami, um, it's easier to send it to me, uh, usually before, and then I'll probably look at I'll look at it and, and try to solve for it. Now, all right, cool. So the domain and range on that graph. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Do you have a question on that, Timothy? How to draw the domain and range on that graph. So you don't. You don't draw the domain. The domain is like the set of values. So you don't, there's no, you know, there's not representation. You can represent it this way, but it's not something that you draw. It's not like you're saying, hey, these are, like the, the reason why you cannot draw it, it's a bunch of numbers. It's a bunch of numbers that, that are part of this domain. There's no representation. Instead of, you know, you could use the set notation, you could just R. It's a bunch of numbers that are part of the domain. Now, the range, the same thing. It could be a bunch of numbers that are part of the range. There's no, there's no way to draw it. So that's, you, you can find out the domain, what the domain is and the range is. And we normally don't draw it unless you're talking about something else. So now, domain is done. Let's, to, let's see the range. Now, domain is from left to right. So the same thing, left to right. So if I, everything that the function can take to the left, I'm, I'm going to stand right here. I don't have to turn. So from the left, you guys know this is left for you, and from the right. So now we're going to do range. Range is a little bit different. So domain is left to right, and range is up and down. So now, before I say anything, who can tell me what the range of this function is without me having to explain what we're saying? So domain, we say it's left and right. So everything to the left, everything to the right. And range is up and down. So everything that the function can take from the lowest possible values, which is negative infinity down here, and all the way to infinity. So now, who can tell me what the range of this function is? So the domain, we say all real numbers. Now let's find a range. Who can tell me what the range is? We use a different color. No reason at all. Range. All right, so before I explain it, who can tell me what the range is? Let's see.
All right, let's see. Zero to infinity, negative infinity to infinity. How did you do that? <laughs> I don't think I ever seen the uh, Blaster Master Zero Two. I don't think I ever seen the sign on the phone. How did you do? How did you do the infinity sign? Uh, but the answer is not quite correct. Uh, not negative infinity to infinity. You teach me better than actual teachers and it's for free. Mad respect. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, this is algebra two. <laughs> the range is all the values greater than zero. Timothy, you close. Timothy, you close. Let's see. Uh, zero to infinity. Okay. Uh, Mvil. Okay. All right. I see some of the people are close. Some of the people have the answers. So now let's see. So let's see what the range is. Um. The range, like I said, is all the values from up to down. So all the way down here, I don't have any value. The function doesn't exist right here. I don't I don't see it part. There's no, this doesn't go all of a sudden go right here. There's, there's no there's no purple line here at the bottom here. So whenever I, I start seeing a purple line, I gotta find my where is that? I start seeing a purple line right here. Right here. That's when I start seeing a purple line. So it goes from here all the way up. Remember I said this continues all the way up, all the way you know, up to infinity. And it goes from here, and start, you start seeing it here, all the way up to infinity. So that's what the, the range of the function is. Now, how do we represent that? Represent that in terms of interval. Somebody said it before, so how do we represent that in terms of interval? So how we, do we have, so I say it from zero, and then when we do an interval, it's like smallest value, low, um, higher, the highest value, so from zero, to infinity. Now, is it this way? I mean, to infinity. Or is it this way? Which one of them is it? So is it from zero to infinity this way? Or is it this way? Notice that there's a point right here. There's a point right here. So now, is it from zero to infinity? Not including zero. This means not including zero. That's what you have the parentheses. Or is it this one, including zero? Now let's see who has the answer. Uh, Alvin, don't you say anything, man. <laughs> All right, so the second way. All right, cool. That's what's up. The second way, the second way. There you go, Emerson. Uh, second way, Sarah Mitch Mitchell. Uh, uh, second way, that's what's up. Um, X stuff, C L E O X. Welcome. Yeah, greater than or equal to zero. One way, Kenneth. Uh, this is uh, this is kind of algebra too. Yeah, Tim Timothy. Uh, you got it this time. Greater than or equal to zero. Thank you, Jess. Uh, I appreciate the compliment. Yeah, that's what's up. Greater than or equal to zero. So now, how do we um, how do we represent that? Yeah, this is greater than or equal to zero. The reason why we say greater than or equal to zero, which is that we consider is the second way, is because on this line here is this point right here. So that that point touches, you know, there's a point here that's negative one, x equals negative one, y equals zero. So that means zero is part of the of the of the range. So if we if the line was directly above, I mean, there's no way I can I can really draw something here. But if they had told us that there was an horizontal receptor at zero and the function doesn't didn't touch it, that that's well that's this would be this case. Now they didn't tell us that. They say there's a point right here on this line. That means zero is part of the function. So when you're looking at domain, and we're gonna recap, when we're looking at domain, we're looking at left to right. So does the function extend all the way out to the left without any any boundaries? Does it extend all the way out to the right without any anything, you know, any cuts, anything? So in this way, it goes all the way to the left without any boundaries. It goes all the way to the right without any boundaries. So that's why the domain is. Now when we're looking at the range, we're looking at values up and down and y values, domain x values, input, range y values, output. So we're looking at 
how does the function goes from all the way out, all the way at the bottom to all the way to the top. So now here, at the bottom here, below here, below the x-axis, there's no, there's no, we don't see any, any purple, any purple line. So that means this doesn't exist right here. The function doesn't exist all the way right here. So it start here and it goes all the way up to infinity. And that's what we have zero to infinity, including zero because there's a point right here on this line. All right, cool, questions? And then we're gonna move on to, let me see what, what's, what else we gotta do for this one. Uh, if you're on YouTube, I apologize. Let's see, let's see what else we gotta do for this question. X-intercept, Y-intercept, uh, all right, cool. Now, I'm gonna explain some cool stuff for you too. Uh, all right, cool. So, second one, that's the stop, second one. All right, any questions? Y E C S Y Y, welcome. Lena underscore revs welcome yogi yogi or yogi welcome all right cool all right i don't see any questions all right let's move on so let's do x intercept and y intercept All right, so now, so now we're, find, we're finding the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So now the, the, the way that we do this is saying that x-intercept, uh, as it says, it intercept the x-axis. Where does the function cuts the x-axis? And as you can see here, it cuts the x -axis, it touches the x-axis right here. So where does it meet the x-axis? Where does the function touches it or cross it or anything? Right here and then right here, because this is the x-axis. And this is the y-axis. So the function, the purple line, meets the x-axis here and here. What do we call these points? The first point right here, what's, what's the name for it? What's the name of this point? And then what's the name of that point? Right here. So this one right here. So we're going to put the x values and the y values. Now, here's another thing to remember. When, when the function intercept the x-axis, the y value is zero. When the function intercept the y-axis, the x value is zero. So based on what I said, the y value is zero, I'm going to put zero for y, and that means this point is negative one, zero. Intercept the, the x-axis, the y value is zero, and this is the y-axis, the x value is zero. Now this point, who can tell me what the coordinate of this point is? What's the coordinate of this point? Let's see who can tell me what the coordinate of this point is. YouTube, Facebook. Uh, let's see. No problem. Kate, one zero. X Elizabeth. X one zero. Timothy one zero. That's what's up. Yeah, you guys got it. Now one zero. The value of x is one. The y value is zero. Now. If you have any questions, let me know. If you don't understand this, we can do it again. All right, so let's do the y-intercepts. So y-intercept, where does the function cross the y-values? The zeros of the function. So where does the function cross the y-values intercept the, the y-axis? Where, where does the function intercept the y-axis? So how do we find this? Where does this thing meet the y-axis? This is the y-axis. It goes all the way up and down. And where does this function meet it? Right here. And this is, this. you probably see this in a lot of algebra too. I mean, usually kids that I tutor, they have a bunch of questions like that. And and they they just lay them out. Domain, range, x intercept, y intercept, um, increasing intervals, decreasing intervals, and that's what we're going to do here. So, y-intercept, intercept here, 
And what do we call this point? Remember what I said, when function crosses the y-axis, the x value is zero. So based on of that, what's the name of this point? Let's see who else, who's going to say it first. I'll give you a shout out. Uh, I'm trying to see Facebook. I'm still alive on Facebook. I don't, I don't get help. Because <laughs> nothing's moving here. That's fine. Don't worry about it. On zero, zero, zero. Emerson. Yeah, just drank. Thought that was algebra two. Yes, it is kind of. I mean, not kind of. I've seen it in algebra two plenty of time. Kids that are tutored. Uh, one zero. Uh, remember, when the function intercept maybe geometry. Uh, when the function intercept the y-axis, the x value is zero. One zero. That was for the other. I hope that was for the other question. Zero one. There you go. Oh, uh, is it Muriel? Four three twenty one. Zero one. Sarah Mitch, Michelle. I know I'm messing up your name. All right, zero one. So the way you read those is x and y. When the function intersect the y-axis, the x value is equal to zero. Even even before I knew anything, I can start putting a zero for x. Now, what's the y value? Y value is right here is one. See, up one. That's it. It's equal to one. Not one zero. Not that. Not one zero. One zero is this point. X is equal to one. Y is equal to zero. That's this point. Right here, this point is zero one. X is equal to zero. Y is equal to one. Now, let's move on to something else. So, I think if you have any. <laughs> All right, so let's see. Uh. Oh, I am.